everyone, it's Leela from Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I am going to show you how to convert your printer into a sublimation printer using sublimation ink. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into it and explain to you um, what printers can be used for sublimation and why certain ones can't. So today I'm working with my Epson uh, Workforce WF7710. Uh, if you've seen my last video, you know that I just unboxed this and I'm going to be converting this for y'all for the first time. The sublimation ink that I will be using today is going to be from Cosmos Ink and I will be posting their link in my description below. Now you can buy sublimation printers that's already, uh, that's made for sublimation like the Sawgrass or you can buy other printers and convert them. So whenever we say convert, uh, it's not a uh, lengthy process or anything. It's simply taking out the stock ink and putting sublimation ink in there because you need that sublimation ink to do sublimation. It really does sound harder than it seems, but it's quite easy. Uh, so um, what you do is you have these ink cartridges that come inside the kits of the sublimation ink kit from Cosmos Ink, and then you put the ink inside of them with the syringes that's also provided from Cosmos Ink. The reason why certain printers cannot be converted to sublimation is because of these uh, ink cartridges. So these are plastic and these are reusable. So all of these can be filled up with the sublimation and then it uh, obviously it uses it up and then you refill it, fill it. So you always use these and you just keep buying the ink. So a lot of times uh, you'll see some printers that you'll research and people say, no, you can't use them uh, because these cartridges have not been made, these plastic cartridges. So um, along with my uh, Epson Workforce WF7710, I'll have um, other printers that you're able to buy that's already sublimation. And then I'll have uh, some other printers that you can go ahead and convert to sublimation. And if you go on the Cosmos Inc. website, it's very, very easy to navigate. You can see that this uh, sublimation kit is made for my Epson 7710, and it's also made for the 7720. So you have a list on his website, and it shows you whichever printer that you have, that's the kit that you buy for your printer. Okay, so the very first thing that you should do is you should set up your Epson printer. Make sure you have set up all of the... Um, properties, uh, make sure you've printed from it, make sure you've printed from the stock ink. You want to make sure that you print from that stock ink because if something were to happen to your Epson printer whenever you first only use sublimation ink, you're not going to know if uh, it is a sublimation ink or if it's actually the printer. So make sure you go ahead and set up your printer all together. If you do want to know how to set up your Epson 7710 printer, I will be posting my video in my description below that I just posted to show you, uh, it's an unboxing and just kind of a quick uh, video to show you how to set yours up. Side note, if you are in the market to buying an already converted sublimation printer, um, just watch this video and just kind of notice how easy this is because a lot of times people will upcharge these already converted printers um, an extra 100 or $200 and it's really unnecessary. Um, because you can do it yourself. You're gonna see in this video how easy it is. And you also want quality ink. So my sublimation ink is a uh, quality ink from Cosmos Ink, and you don't know what ink is going into that printer. So if you're using a not quality ink, low quality ink, uh, it might mess up the printer and you wanna keep that same brand of ink in your printer at all times. So when I'm finished with this, I'm gonna go right back to cosmosink.com and then go ahead and uh, reorder the same ink that I'm using. So in my sublimation kit, uh, I obviously is, am going to have my sublimation ink. So it comes with all four of the colors. You have the cyan, the yellow, the magenta, and the black. It comes with four of the syringes it comes in pieces like so, so you don't get any of the um, the colors mixed up. So you have this piece here and it comes with the needle and then you just attach them. And then it comes with your cartridges and you have all four cartridges. Again, the Scion, uh, yellow, magenta, and black. The black's going to be a little bigger uh, only because you're going to be using more black ink than the others. So whenever you do this conversion, if you want to put down some paper, paper towels, use gloves, whatever you want to do to make it a little cleaner, 
go ahead and do so. Uh, I have some paper towels just in case I do make a mess because everyone knows how heavy handed I am. And then we're gonna go ahead and open our inks. So this is the first time I've opened my inks, so I'm going to break the seal. You can see I already have ink on me. And I'm just going to open every one of them just so the seal is broke. I've decided to put a pair, just a one glove on my right hand. And I forgot to mention, if they've been sitting for a while, uh, be sure to give them a nice shake. You don't have to shake them too much. Just make sure um, they're shook just a little bit. So I'm going to start with the Scion and I'm going to place it on the paper towel and then I'm obviously going to get the Scion cartridge. So it's very easy, blue with the blue. So you have two little holes here. If you look closely, you have this hole here, which I don't know if it will focus, there you go. And then we have the second hole up here. So this one that's closest to this little clip is going to be where you, you add the sublimation ink. So these, sorry, this one right here is kind of the breathing hole. So you're going to keep that closed for now, um, but you're going to make sure that's open whenever you place that in your printer because it allows it to kind of breathe. So you can see the hole where you have filled up. You can kind of see inside where the ink's going to go in and lay down in there. So I'm going to remove that little tab thing don't lose this. And then I'm going to open up my Scion without making a mess, which I'm famous for. And then I'm going to take this syringe. Be careful. Uh, it is a needle on the end here. So you can see it's very sharp. And then I'm kind of going to, let me see if I can try to get this on camera for y'all without making a huge mess. I'm going to take my syringe and put it inside of my Scion and kind of lean it at an angle. And I don't think I'm going to need that much, but we'll see. And then I'm just going to add it inside of that hole there. So let me see if I can do this and get it on camera. Let me put it this way so y'all can see. And I'm just going to slowly put it in there. You can see tap it on there a little bit to make sure that it goes in. Okay, so my heavy hand got me again. So make sure that syringe is in there, the needle part's nice and tight in there, and then fill it up. You could see that the ink cartridge is filling up with ink. As it's uh, getting closer to the needle, I'm going to raise the needle so it doesn't drown itself. And I'm going to need just a little more. Place it back in there. Make sure I make a mess because why wouldn't I? And then add more to the top. And I can add a, a little bit more there. just to fill it up completely. And then once it's filled completely, you're going to take your little thingy here, I'm gonna call it a thingy, and you're just gonna place it right back on there and you're going to have that sealed tight right there. Now since this has ink in here, I'm going to place it right side up with the ink in there. Then I'm going to move on to my yellow. So I'm going to repeat this process and I'm going to have separate syringes for each color. So again, you wanna remove the thingy from the clip part. So this is the clip part. You do not wanna remove this one yet. You just wanna remove the one that's closest to the clip.
like I mentioned earlier, the black ink is going to be bigger. You have a bigger cartridge. Um, so the little thingy, the lids, the holes, um, they're going to look a little different. They're going to be placed differently. But again, you're going to be uh, filling up the one closest to the clip. So I know it's opposite for this. So you can see, you could see this is where the ink sits. The ink sits in here. And this is kind of the air chamber. So you want to get it close to this clip. So if your inks or if your cartridges look differently from mine, that's fine. Keep just They should all be universal when it comes to opening it with the clip, towards the clip. So this one's closer to the clip on this one. So I'm going to remove it and then add the ink on this one. Okay, so all of my colors are now filled up. The ink cartridges are full. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but I heavy handed about every single one of those. So um, what I did was I just blotted it with a paper towel and it came right off. So the syringes I'm going to clean out with water, put them back in its box or bag, and then I'll use them for next time. So I don't have to buy the complete kit. Next time I'm just going to buy the ink because I have the cartridges and I have the syringes. I have all of my inks inside of the cartridges. Do not do that and knock them over. Um, you're going to take off the little tab thing. So remember the little breathing uh, chamber or holes that I mentioned earlier? You're going to remove those. So these little pieces that are away from the clips or the pieces that you did not use to fill up your ink. So we need these removed whenever we place them inside of the printer. So carefully remove these. And honestly, once you remove these, if you lose these forever, that's okay. Because you're never going to have to, um, you're never gonna have to put these back on for any reason. Now, if you want to, if you don't use your printer for a long time, let's say you, uh, you just stop using the printer, then um, if you wanna put those things back on to kind of save your ink so it doesn't dry out, you can do that. But while the ink is inside the printer, you wanna make sure those little air holes or those um, chambers are removed, the little thingy majobbers are removed so we can breathe. Now we're going to move on to the printer. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the stock cartridges and we're going to add the sublimation cartridges in. Now, I know on regular printers, you just open the lid and you go. So this is not any regular printer. You have to do this through the, me the menu and then put the cartridges in because if you don't, it's not going to recognize it. So we're gonna go to our touch screen. We're gonna go to the right and we're gonna click settings. Settings is all the way to the right and I hope my camera is picking this up properly. Once you hit settings, you're going to go, it's going to be four down, which is maintenance. And I really don't think my camera's picking this up. So I tilted it some. So like I said, you're gonna go to the main uh, screen. You're gonna go to settings, and then you're going to go to the fourth one down, which is maintenance. You're gonna click maintenance, and then you're going to see again, the fourth one down, ink cartridges replacement. So once you've clicked that, you're going to see replace the ink cartridges, and you're going to click start. So once you've clicked start, it's going to tell you what to do. So it's gonna prompt you and it's gonna say, lift the scanner unit and replace the ink cartridges. When finished, close the scanner unit. So I'm going to lift the, the uh, top up and you're going to see the inks do a little uh, back and forth motion. Let it, let it do its back and forth motion like so until it's completely finished. So we should go one to the left and then back. So now it's finished. What you're gonna see is you're going to see the inks that came with your printer. You're going to pop this up, this little tray, and then you're going to remove the inks. So how you remove the inks is you have the little clickies, like my terminology there, and you're just gonna remove one by one. So there's a little click thing, and then remove them like so. And then now you're just going to add the other ink. 
Keep in mind that if your ink cartridges are still fairly new and you've punctured them, you should have punctured them because you should have ran regular ink through, that if you put them right side up, it's going to leak. So I'm gonna just keep them upside down so it avoids them possibly leaking. I'm now going to take my sublimation ink and then I'm going to install it like I would any other ink. So you can see the little sensors right here. I call them sensors and I have sensors on this end. So I want the sensors to line up. So I'm going to place the black in here and you're going to push down rather hard because you want to hear that click. So you heard the click there. So now I'm going to do the scion and I'm going to uh, show you all the click again. So make sure you listen for that click because it's a really, uh, it's actually a very forceful, rather forceful um, press. So make sure you're pressing that in. So if you don't have that click, then the printer is not going to register those colors. So I'm matching up the colors really easy. You got the black, the scion, the magenta, and the yellow. Once you've matched up the colors, you are going to close the lid. Once you close the lid, you're going to hear your printer do a lot of things. Oh, before you close the lid, you're going to close the lid to the ink. And you want to make sure that's really pressed in. So um, if it's not pressed in, the, the printer is going to tell you that it's not recognizable. So once you close it, like I said, you're going to hear the, the printer do a lot of uh, fun little noises. And um, we'll see what happens. So hopefully it accepts it. If it doesn't, I'll show you what to do if it doesn't. So my lid's going to shut. It's now loading. You can see it loading there. Once your lid's closed, you're going to hear your printer do a lot of things. So just leave it be and uh, wait until the screen's finished. Do not power off. Um, it's doing printer things. So just leave her alone and I'll be right back. Okay, so about uh, five minutes of the printer initiating. Um, it is now complete. So you're going to click OK and you're going to see that the ink was installed properly. So I just want to let y'all know if it does not say it's complete or if your printer is saying that it does not recognize the ink for some reason, that is okay. These cartridges aren't Epson cartridges. So what you're going to do is just redo this entire process, starting with going to the settings. So you're going to go home, you're gonna go back to the settings, and you're going to do this all over again. And you're gonna go down to the maintenance and then redo everything again, add the cartridges, take them all out and then re-add them. So once you do this uh, ink cartridge replacement, you're gonna open the lid, remove it, put it back in, remove it, put it back in, remove it, put it back in, and then let it initiate again. Sometimes it doesn't recognize it. It might take two or three times. I got lucky on my first time, so uh, I'm glad it worked out. So now we're gonna go home. Another thing I do wanna mention is that you're going to see the ink cartridge, uh, I forgot where it was, but you're gonna see the ink levels. Uh, those are a complete lie. Um, since they aren't Epson, like I said, Epson cartridges, they're going to be a little off. So just make sure you open your lid and just check them from time to time. So if it says it's getting low, it might not be getting low. Or if it says it's full, it might not be full and it actually might be getting low. So I just want to throw that out there uh, for y'all. Just remember to always check your ink cartridges. So like I said, my ink is inside of my printer. Um, so what I'm going to do now is you need to flush this printer out. So you need to flush the ink out of the printer. So the stock ink, not the sublimation ink. So the way that you do that is you wake up your printer. Let me see if I can get closer here. You're going to go to settings and then you're going to click on maintenance and then print head nozzle check. So what this is going to do is it's going to print out a couple lines of uh, ink. So we're trying to get all of that stock ink out of your printer because I want those sublimation ink to come through the printer. So you're going to click OK and then it's going to start printing those lines. My ink printed out on the paper so you can see the black, the yellow, the magenta and the scion. So I don't know if the camera is picking this up the way that I can see this in person, but you can tell that this ink is not sublimation. So sublimation actually reacts to heat. Once heat is added to sublimation, that's when it kind of uh, activates. So then you get that nice bright color. So before heat is added to sublimation ink, it's going to look dingy. So you're going to have the 
black kind of look like a dark brown and the yellow look a little dingy. So in my uh, eyes, the black is black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep flushing out this ink. And what you can do is you can actually use this paper four times if you're low on paper. So just keep putting it in, but flipping it. So it's going to print there, 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 uh, and then on the back. So, um, or I'm sorry, two on the front and two on the back. So you can reuse that four times. So I'm going to go back and uh, do all colors again, and then I'm going to hit start. So that's going to uh, print another sheet for me. And like I said, we're just flushing out that old ink so we can get that sublimation ink on here. Hey everyone, I'm back. Um, this video has actually taken place over about a week time span. So a lot of y'all might have seen on my page that I've been having some technical difficulties with my sublimation. Uh, I have, so I want to just check in with y'all during this video and tell you a little bit of the issues I've been having. So if you run into these issues, I want y'all to be able to correct them the way that I did. So the problem I was having is I was running my test page on my print head page um, when I went to the maintenance, the print head nozzle check. I did that like what I told y'all previously in this video and my lines weren't coming out as they should be. So my sublimation ink was, was coming through the lines but they were still getting um, kind of in pieces like so. So the goal for this uh, print head nozzle check is for all the lines to be uh, like the blue, like the cyan. So you could tell my black and my magenta, there's no lines. So I was having a lot of problems. Um, what I didn't tell y'all and what I didn't do was the print head cleaning and then the print head alignment. So what you can do is you could do the print head nozzle check and since it's converting your Epson stock print uh, ink into other ink that's not really Epson approved, you might get lucky and it might just go ahead and take off and you'll receive those grids that you wanna receive that you should receive like so. So this is how it should look. Uh, besides, this is uh, one of the older ones but it's missing a line here. So if you do that print head nozzle check, don't do it 10 times. Do it about five times back to back, maybe seven max. But if you don't get anything after about five to seven times and it's still looking wonky and it's not looking like grids, if you don't have all of your lines there, do a head cleaning. If that head cleaning doesn't work, then move on to a, uh, it's called a CMYK purge image. So then I had to do that. So whenever I realized the cleaning wasn't working, I did an alignment and that's all under the settings. You'll go to the settings, you'll go to maintenance, you'll see print head nozzle check. That didn't work. So I said, all right, let's go ahead and do a print head cleaning. I did a cleaning back to back, that didn't work. And then I did a print head alignment. It does a horizontal alignment and then it does a vertical alignment. That didn't work. So then I decided doing a CMYK purge image. And all you do is, let me show you with my laptop, is, you Google the CY, I'm sorry, the CMYK purge image, and it just shows you that image. And I don't know if you could see on my laptop here, I have all these wires, but it shows you the image here. So all it did was I took this image, I took one of these images, I saved it to uh, Microsoft Word, and then I blew it up on Microsoft Word. You could see that it's blown up, and then I printed it. So that's all I did here. And you want to make sure you do it on the full page because you want that image to be um, completely filled. So whenever I printed that image, what happened with me was this. All of my colors ran through, but it ran through uh, with the magenta like so. So then I was having more problems. So I was getting closer. Things were going better. So then I, uh, I did the cleaning again, and then the cleaning still didn't work. But like I said, everybody's experience is different when it comes to converting these printers. Sometimes your printer will just take the sublimation ink with no problem, and sometimes you will have issues with it. 
So eventually after a couple more cleanings, um, and then I did kind of a manual cleaning, I ended up with my uh, purge page to look like this. So you want your purge page to look just like this. You want it to be that black, that cyan, that magenta, and the yellow. You don't want it to be uh, blotchy like that other magenta. You don't want the colors to be off. Let's say like this one, I have a lot of pages here. See how this is all blue and then yellow? You don't want that. You want them to look similar to the colors that are inside of your ink. Now again, sublimation ink, it activates with heat. So this is going to look dingy. It's going to look off. That's okay. If this was on sublimation printer and I put this on polyester and I heated this up, the colors will pop. For whatever reason, if your purge page keeps looking like this, then send me a message on my Facebook group or my Facebook page. My page is uh, Miss Kiss Creations or on Instagram, Miss Kiss Creations, and I will send you a step-by-step -step on how I have it clean mine uh, manually to make my colors not look like this. And if enough people comment or message me, they have the same problem that I did, which is rare. Uh, basically, my, uh, my head was clogged, was very, very clogged with my magenta. If enough people message me and I realize it's a bigger problem than what I think it is, then I will end up just doing a YouTube video. It takes literally five to 10 minutes and the video will probably take 10 minutes max to show y'all. But I really don't think it's it's that big of an issue. I just think I just got unlucky and my printer just wanted me to work extra hard. So uh, again, make sure you're cleaning your printer. You're giving it a good clean because it has new ink in there. So go to settings, make sure you clean it. Make sure you do that print head nozzle check up to five, maximum seven times. Do the print head alignment, the vertical and the horizontal. Once you're finished with that, even if you still get these lines on that print head nozzle check like so, if you're still getting these lines that I did, go ahead and find that purge image and I'll have that information in my description below, the purge image, and make sure it comes out like this. If it doesn't come out like this the first time, do a cleaning. After the cleaning, do another purge page and make sure the page is on the entire page. Make sure it's filled up. It doesn't have to be five by seven, four by nine. Do it so it can fill the entire page. And if it keeps um, looking like this with any color or some color is just not coming out. There was one where my magenta didn't come out at all. Again, I've been working on this guys for about a week trying to set up this printer. Uh, but there was one where my magenta didn't come out at all and then I had to manually clean it. So if you are just thinking you need to give up, don't give up. Go ahead and send me a message on my Facebook or my Instagram and I'll show you step by step how to, uh, how to fix it and what I had to go through, which is actually really easy. Luckily, my Epson Workforce WF7710 is all set up and I finally figured out to set it up fully for sublimation. I am ready to make tumblers and shirts and face masks and everything else with sublimation. So I know this video was kind of long and it was a lot of information and it wasn't too fun, but unfortunately you have to do all of this stuff in order to get to the fun stuff. I really hope this video helped y'all and if it did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time.